All right, here we go. What's up? What's going on, guys? So, of course, this is another video that is going into or coming from the tournament guidebook that is uh, going to be dropped by Vishnu Warrior, who we're going to have probably coming up in the next actually few days or so. We're going to have him actually on the stream, and uh, we can talk to him about a little bit more about the book and stuff like that. So, we got so much stuff into this book. Make sure you are, you are learning and watching the other videos that come with this playlist. But you will be uh, today. We're looking at Ali 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 Ekin's, uh, gun and I. I Aliakin, right? Alakine, Aliakin, Aliakin, right? Okay, we all know who it is. Thanks for the hundred biddies and Riz, right? So you know, but it's as pronounced like Aliakin, Aliakin. It's like one thing, right? I didn't got corrected by that a lot many times, but we say Alakine. Most people say Alakine, especially here in America, but it is different. Aliakin, Aliakin, right? Whatever. But Ali Ekin's gun, that's what we're we'll looking at today. If you've heard of it, if you haven't heard of it, you're going to learn about it today. And something you can use in your own game. So this is uh, actually going or coming from, once again, Tournament Guidebook, Axioms, One-Liners, and Mantras, dropping later this year. So um, let's get to it. Let's get to it. Perfect. All right. So what is this game? So this game right here, let me get the stats. Stats. So this was in 1930. White is Ali Alexander. Alexander Ali Ekin versus... Catch this. You can see it on the screen, so it's not a surprise. Aaron Nimzowicz, right? The guy, the man himself, right? Look at this. This is going to be a nice game, right? And it's something very instructive, right? Very fun stuff. So, okay, cool. We see the attacking player, the man himself. Yeah, 91 years ago. This was in 1930. So let's check it out. E4, E6. So we got a Frenchie on the board. French defense, something I hate to play against, in fact, actually. D4, D5, and knight to C3. So I was very intrigued by this because I'm like, oh, I play knight c3, big fella. So that's what you do. Like, I mean, I'm already intrigued by this. Knight to c3, which is usually the, um, it can go into the win hour variations, the burn variation, the Rubenstein, the, the classical. But there's like 20 different variations that can go through this. You can also play knight d2. You can also check my French video. I have a playlist about the French defense on how and what you can do and if you're having problems with the French. Um, but you do have knight to d2. Um, you have uh, also the d3 version. Of the French, which is D3 right now, and you also have like the Milnerberry Gambit and the advanced variations. So you, you have a lot of things. Yeah, uh, you like Knight D2, J Dub. Yeah, Knight D2, Tarash is the bomb. Yeah, uh, Gary Kasparov actually liked this, and Wesley So actually recommend this in one of his recent courses. Is the Knight D2 version. I'm a big fan of Knight C3 still. I've had some material from Harry Krishna, Pintala Harry Krishna, one of the best from India, has a nasty book on how to beat the French with this. But he doesn't have the best material against Bishop B4. After analyzing with one of my coaches and working with it, we just didn't like this Bishop, what he liked, what he had against Bishop B4 in a win hour variation. So I actually like to use still what Roman Jinji Hashvili uses. And I have to uh, analyze more with the engine because some of the lines are a little outdated. When you play higher and strong big boys, it's not the easiest. What's the exchange? What about the exchange variation? Exchange variation is tough. Magnus has played it, but the, you're not getting an advantage. You're you're going to try for an advantage, but nine times out of ten, you're not getting an advantage with the white pieces. If you're looking for that with the exchange variation of the French, you heard it here first. So knight to c3, bishop b4, right? So this is from Aaron Nimzowicz, bishop b4. Hitting, uh, of course, pinning the knight. This is mainline theory, e5 and c5, right? This is all theory here. Now you have a3, which most people play. But I was very surprised and I was very hyped when I saw Bishop D2 here. Because this is, yo, Cyclos and Zaphos. Thanks for the Primester two months in a row. Appreciate you. So after Bishop D2, in fact, um, Roman Gingy Hasvili is a big fan of Bishop D2. This is where I learned the system from. Was Roman Gingy Hasvili himself playing the Bishop D2 system? So I saw this and I'm like, bro, this was in 1930. Let me see what the man himself, Alexander Aliakin, did right here. You think Nimzowicz would play the Nimzowicz? <laughs> right, right, exactly, right? So he played 97. This is still all mainline stuff. Knight h6 is another move. And the idea behind bishop d2 is the next move that follows here, which is pretty cool. Knight to b5. Intending the d6 square and, of course, hitting the d2 bishop or the b4 bishop. Trade, trade, and then castles. And now right here, uh, Roman Gingy has really recommends the f4 move which I've played for a very long time. Let me actually see what the engine recommends. Wow, yeah, so my move, of course, which is for Romans. I've always remembered this theory, which is F4 here. And another move is available as well. So it's white to move. Now it's on you, chat. It's on you. 
What do you do in this position? It was not f4. He did not go for f4. Alexander Aliakin chose something else. Why to move? What do you play? We got knight f3, Jackson Ham chess says c3. Oop, where's the knight going? Castle Queenside from Huron Dragon. Knight moves to f3, developing the knight. Thanks for the uh, follow, Reggie side. Knight e2, right here. That's an interesting one. Castle Queen side is a possibility as well. H4, knight d6. All these are pretty good moves. All these are moves. But in fact, the move that he chose, which is with the third engine line here, is c3. So shout out to you if you said c3 there. Jackson Ham Chess said c3. So there's c3. Bishop d3 from uh, Duke of Nuts 1. Says Bishop d3. 25, Sir Kobe. Thanks for the follow. Duke of Nuts 1. Thanks for the follow. So c3. And after c3, Bishop d3 seems natural. Yeah, these are all moves you can actually make, in fact. Like, and not that, you know, c3 and f4 is a move. c3 is a move. Uh, 92 is probably not, to be honest. h4 might be a little premature because you do have to deal with this knight. I mean, are you going in here or are you not? You know, you have to deal with this ASAP. And you also have to deal with the fact that f6 is white's plan or black's plan, in fact. When you see a center, you break up a center. And this is very strong. So if we can break this down by means of f6 and capturing, your center is obliterated and black has two pawns in here. So you're looking crazy, in fact, as white. So you need to, like, bolster this by c3 or f4. Typical response to c5 in this French. Yes, correct. You're on dragon 100%. So c3 after c3. There's b6, and then after b6, there's f4. So f4, um, defending everything, make sure it's nice and solid in here. And then bishop a6 from your boy Aaron Nimzowicz. He hits us with bishop a6. I've never actually seen it like this. I'm not even going to lie. Never seen it set up like this. But after bishop a6, knight f3, queen d7, and then we're going to get to the to the gun in a minute here, uh, of the Ali Ekans gun, queen d7, and now your knight is hit on b5. So with the knight hit on b5, what do you do next? Why to move, chat? Your move in here. The knight on b5 is hit. What's the move? A4 from Jackson Ham. Spinza says A4. Spinza says A4. Cyclos says A4. Everybody's saying A4. That's unanimous. All right. Okay. Knight D6. We got one knight D6 and a bishop D3, which is face blockage. 100% natural. Don't do it to yourself, big fella. We're just going to take this knight and knight knight. Yo. Whoa. Sheesh! Sheesh! Bro! Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! Wow, big shout out to Ben Fingo, the man himself, the legend. Thanks for the nine months, first off. He's been subbed to the stream for nine months. Ben Fingo, thanks, bro. Appreciate you, man. Thanks for the raid, too, as well. Have a good one. Hope you had a great one. We're looking at Ali Ekin's gun today. Um, doing some some analysis. So we're looking at Ali Atkins gun of a game back in 1930. What's going on, y'all? What's going on? This is the YouTube right here. We we will be posting it to the YouTube channel. So this is uh, Ali Atkins gun. So we're on this move right here. Aaron Nimzowicz played queen d7, hidden b5. This is very interactive chat. So make sure you're answering the questions or where you would move. Make sure you hit the follow button too. If you're new to the stream, welcome. We in here. Welcome to the stream. Let's go. Let's go. So look, queen d7, a4 was unanimous. That's right. Thanks, Dimple. Appreciate it. a4 defending b5. Ali, I can score connect four this game. Really? Yeah, he did. Thanks for the follow, Scuzz. Love you, Ben. Love you, Ben. Absolutely. We love Ben. Big Ben, the man himself. Appreciate you, bro. Thanks for the follow. Thanks for the follow, Sputnik. So a4 defends the knight. Obvious, right? And then black goes knight b to c6. So I'm developing. You have to get pieces out no matter what. You need to get your pieces out. So... Knight B to C6. All right, guys. White to move. You plan Ale you're playing as Ale Alexander Aliak in here. Your move, what are you gonna do? Knight B to C6 is on the board. Let me turn the engine on, see what some other possibilities are. Good times ahead. Thanks for the follow. We got knight d6 in the chat. We have Rook D1, Castle Queen side, B4, Bishop E2. We have C4 in the chat. Bishop d3 looks natural. In fact, bishop d3 look, does look pretty natural. It does feel like bishop d3 is a natural move. And I will tell you about it in a minute. Bishop e2, h4. That's just me. I'm a fan of h4, especially in French lines. Especially in the French work. 
All right, so look, bishop d3, in fact, is the secondary move. That's the move from the engine. Bishop d3 is the second one, right? Move number one is b4, which is the game move, okay? So I will, spoiler, yes, b4 is the game move, right? These other ones don't work. Now, bishop e 2 you could and just kind of castle. h4, I think, is premature. You still have to focus on development. No matter what the opening is, you have to focus on your development. As you see, black is already fully developed. So you need to be very careful and tread lightly unless... You have something strong, right? Then an exception. And here, b4 being an exception, gaining some space, moving the knight eventually, maybe playing b5, attacking c5 myself. This is stuff you do, taking away the queen side counterplay that French and the French players have, right? You know what I'm saying? Oh, I get it because if you play b4, play the next move. Yeah, chess is so deep. Chess is extremely deep, right? Correct. G4 from Mammoth. Oh man, you 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 a savage. I like that G4 push. But it needs to be at the right time, probably after bishop d3 castles, then g4, probably. Maybe swing the queen to g2, sack on h3, right? And then you got the knight g5, queen h3, Greek gift. And uh, that could be gg, lights out, start a new one. So b4 is on the board, Aaron Nemzowicz, hit him, hit him, c takes, and then c takes b4, follow right back, right? So takes, takes, and then bishop b7, he backs that boy up and said, okay, uh, you're not going to let me take, you're not going to let me trade the light square bishop whatever right whatever i'm gonna just back this boy up bishop b7 and key and just shield and get up out the way so now this is when alexander aliakin takes his takes his uh his decision here on you know what i think it's time white to move what do you do we got knight d6 now for kia ross thanks for the follow chips and churros we got d6 so-called pawn march opening knight d6 we got knight d6 again knight d6 Anything else? Anything else? Rook C1 from Huron Dragon. Aliakin's gun on the C file. So the Sonics. Rook A3 preparing the gun. Rook A3. Okay. All right. Here it is. Here it is. Knight D6. Just go here first, right? Hit the bishop. It's very annoying. And in fact, even though this bishop is absolutely 1,000% gross, 1,000 wow percent gross, this bishop is absolutely disgusting. More of a French bishop. That's what they call it, right? French bishop. It's very, very bad. So. And of course, we will take this anyway due to the light squares being extremely weak. I can see a bishop b5 coming in the near future. a6 weakened squares around here as well. White is just crushing in a way. It feels very good, but engine always says everything equal. Everything all good. Ain't nothing wrong, right? Engine just say everything equal. And in fact, the engine recommends knight c8 here. Now, after the move uh, knight to d6, there was f5 first which is a, a real thing that happens. Kappa Bo, thanks for the follow. Appreciate you. Base, Austin, he thanks for the follow. So F5, F5 happens from Nimsuwich. After F5, all right, Chachi, I got a lot of moves here. A lot of moves, right? I mean, there's a lot of possibilities. I'm not even going to lie. But, of course, this is for you to learn and for you to understand and for us to talk about. Why to move? What are we doing? 30 moves deep? Everything is fine, right? All right. 30 moves deep, everything fine. Things that follow Boom Pow, a viral whiz kid. Opposite from viral whiz kid. A5 from Jackson Ham Chess. I think Jackson Ham Chess is actually looking at the game. I probably grabbed it uh, and then like answering. A5, opposite, bishop takes f6, h3. h3, bishop b5, a5, a5. Four prepare of g4. Do he do we want to take the bishop or the knight? Wait, let me read this again. Do we want to take the bishop? Or is the knight stronger on d6 because it's a weak bishop? That's a great question, in fact. 100 percent an excellent question. Do you want to take the bishop or do you want to keep the knight? Because it's stronger on d6, and this is a weak bishop. That's a good question. Sometimes uh, of course, sometimes you do want to capture the bishop, and sometimes you don't. It really depends on the position. It really depends on the position. I think it's not time to take it right now. We need to be optimally placed with our pieces before we actually take it. And when we can't be kicked right now. Maybe if we are kicked and we have the choice to, then we're probably going to take. So, but in fact, here's the move, guys. The move is A5. A5 gaining some space with A6 being a, a possibility. Bishop B5 and Rook C1 as well. So after a5, there was knight to c8. And knight to c8, now he's like, yo, bro, get this knight out my house right now. I'm tired of this. 
you got to go, right? And my students know this too all the time. When they cross the line, they got to go. So, of course, knight c8, he gets rid of this knight. Get up out the crabster. D sharp, D harsh shoe. Thanks, 24. Thanks for the follow. Knight c8. So now, chat, what are we doing? This is pretty obvious. We literally just talked about this. Why to move? I admire how Aliakin and Botvinik regained the world championship after losing it, especially what Aliakin overcame to do it. Yes, yes. Take the bishop, and we have knight takes c8 from Kiarash. Yes, that is correct. Knight takes bishop is the right move, guys. Obviously, we just talked about this. Take the bishop. Just take the bishop. Silent castles. Oh, man, here they go. Here they go. Here they go with the silent moves. Knight takes b7. Here, knight takes b7 is the move. Queen takes b7, and now white to move, guys. Finish this out. Let's go. This is not a finish yet. We still got probably like 17 moves left, something like that, close to it. Actually, let me get an exact number. 14 moves. So, a6. Knight takes b7. We got knight b5. Ocean Smeller says a6. We have b5. b5 and a6. Man, y'all unanimous. a6. a6 is it. Rick C1 from Sonics, but it is A6 first. Gain more space. Regain way more space, right? Queen goes to F7. Now, keep the threats up, y'all. Keep the threats up. Or just develop. It's up to you. But if I was you, I'd probably keep some threats up. White to move. What are we doing? Alexander Ali, I can play what after this? B5. I see B5. I see H4 hitting. Says Phantom Fan Master Cleanser. Bishop B5. We got B5. We got Knight G5. B5 or Bishop B5. Thorn Pawn. Sorry. Quick sneeze. Okay. B5. Bishop B5. 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 All right. Here it is. It is Bishop B5. You are correct. Hit the Knight with the Bishop. And I'm developing at the same time. Knight is gross on squares, by the way. Imagine if you had to go knight d8. Knight d8. Imagine doing this and being comfortable with the rest of this game. You know in tournaments, right? People can walk around, which I'm sure that was the case here too. You can walk around and you can look at other people's games. And if you came around and saw one of your colleagues or one of your players, that one of your friends, right, with a position like this... Right. Usually you just look and you glance and you make a face or something and you just walk away. Or you like, sheesh, I'm glad I'm not playing this position. Right. This is exactly how this looks. Right. Now, this is very, very bad. In fact, after Bishop B5, here it is. Knight A to E, Knight 8 to E7. So he was like, all right, bro, I just got to get out of here. Like this is getting squeezed. Right. I mean, this is ridiculous. This is absolutely ridiculous. And, and I haven't even castled yet. White to move. What do we do, guys? I'd be like, you gotta un un <laughs> uninstall this game, bro. Yeah, face be just like that. Phantom Master Cleanser. Castle, castle, castle. King F2, Rick C1, Knight G5. Knight G5. Y'all loving this Knight G5 move. Knight G5 can be right, but you, you, you just want to make sure everything is correct. So, castles is correct. Aliak and castles. And then, H6, stopping Knight G5. That was your chance. That was your chance. Now it's gone. Cowboy Dixon, thanks for the follow. Knight g5 is not a move anymore. But we do have other moves to make. And this one's on you, big fella. What do you do, chat? This one's on you. H3, of course, stop. Just stop it. Why not knight g5 first? No, oh, knight g5, uh, uh, queen g6, right? Let's actually go back. If knight g5, queen g6, I'm kind of just chilling, right? H4, maybe h6, h5, queen e8. And then maybe take, so maybe knight g5 could be a possibility. In fact, so maybe I have to go queen h5 then to stop the h4, h5 idea. But my idea is to play h6. Right. But knight takes c6, I guess. I guess, honestly, maybe you could have played just knight g5. Right. It looks great. But he just wanted the castle to be 100%, you know, safe. Right. It's safe first, then attack, not attack, and then be safe. Right. You have to be very, very careful with that. Because if you're wrong, you lose. Right. Many, many cases. So he just castled. Saying, okay, cool. And if I'm not going to have knight g5, I have another thing in mind. And the chat says, rook f to c1s. A lot of those. Rook c1s. Rook c1s. Rook c1s. Okay. So, 
uh, h6, and then rook f to c1. Here it is, right? It's always about the rooks or about which rook in that manner. But rook f to c1 is on the board, so great job. Does the engine suggest g5 in here? Let me see. Right here, no, and no, and uh, yeah, g5 is just like never happening. And you're always attacking. Yeah, big facts. Oh, one thou out. One thou out. Why is F better than A here? That's a great question. In fact, um, I mean, really, it could be either or. It could be either or, really. It really can be either or. There's, there are rare cases where, like, this A pawn would be defended, right? But honestly, you could do either or. And in fact, turning on the engine, like, there's rare cases. I'm just telling you, there are rare cases where... And maybe not even rare, like more often than not, to be honest, but a lot of times these pawns are weak or like there's something you're defending with one rook or you want to keep the potential of something else with one rook. So you want to use the other rook like it's different. But if you turn on the engine, the engine right now says it's 2.94 plus 2.94 for rook A to C1, which they prefer this one as move one, and then 0.2 or 2.93. So point. 0, 0.1 of a difference here 2.94 and 2.93 are rook fc1 and rook ac1 doesn't really matter right it just kind of depends on what the situation is so kind of different here evening bad things are to follow it depends intuitively what is rock is best sell at positional right in game yeah it just depends right but he, he, he chose the f rook whatever and then rook f to c8 right right I wonder what the lot. Yeah, correct. Yeah, it really is, man. <laughs> it's like engines just, and maybe it's just like, well, we had two choices. We had to pick one, right? Maybe it's just that, you know, kind of funny. But Rook F to C8. After Rook F to C8, this is pretty obvious. Now we're getting into Ali Ekin's gun. For people that are already familiar with this, you kind of put, know what you should do here. But if you're not familiar with it, you're going to learn and see what Ali Ekin's gun actually is. It is on you now, chat. White to move. What do we do? We got Rook C2 in the chat. All plays on the queen side, so why not bring the other piece? Rook A3. Yeah, correct. That's a great uh, great observation. Rook C2 or Rook C3. Rook C3 from Auburn Knight. Rook C3, Bishop F1. Well, you have the right idea, guys. You have the right idea. Literally the right idea. Both of these are moves. Both of these are moves. Rook a3. Rook a3 and rook c2. Ali Ekin chose rook c2. Queen e8. Defending. Because really, like, what else do you do? The knight is absolutely gross. Knight d8. Are you really going to play knight d8? It's just like, uh... Yeah, let's just let's just get past that. Like, we're, we're, like you're just not playing this move. Just, just don't even do that. So, queen e8 is what he chose to defend this. And keep some pressure. But, obviously, you know, we don't even have to ask the chat. You know what you're about to do here. Rook A to C1, and you're done. Or at least, there's pressure on the file. But we don't have enough. We don't have enough. So, after Rook A to C1, Rook A to B8. I don't even know what he's doing. I don't think he know what he's doing with this move here. Right? Rook A to B8. What's the next move? What did you even do? Right? It does the same thing on A8. As it does on b8 if you think about that right in fact i mean okay okay you can go to one square one square extra great excellent but this is what happens you know it's hard to make good moves in a bad position and it's hard to make good good moves when you're losing right so i mean it's really hard here very very tough bad position hard to make good moves it's uh, very obvious so rook a to b8 even aaron nimza which as strong as he was did not find a move played rook b8 and so to follow tree shade 92 Right, correct, with rook c8. Why not rook c7? Let's take a look at it. If rook c7, well, in fact, it's actually going to end up being actually the same thing here. He kind of looked for a waiting move in a way, but there's so much pressure that's going to happen here. It doesn't make sense. Rook c3, rook a, c8, rook here, and then you kind of just shuffle because you can't really move anything because queen c1's coming. So it's kind of coming anyway, but this is what he chose. Rook a to c1, rook a to b8. Queen e3. Which was just a move to kind of stop like knight takes d4 tricks that may be in there because taking is with check. So it's kind of annoying to have these kind of checks involved. 
rook to c7, and then here we go. Rook c3, bring that boy in there. This is pretty easy. Ali Ekin's gun, he's loading the gun, right? So, you know, first step, you know, pull the gun out, right? Okay, make sure it's loaded, check it, all right? And then we put the bullets in it and all that other stuff, and we aim, and we ready. And there it is. And there it is, Ali Ekin's gun. This is the famous, 100% famous, Ali Ekin's gun. Take a picture of this, frame it, put it in your head, remember it. Ali Ekin's gun here. Bam, that boy is locked and loaded. Look at that right there. Everything we got aiming on this file. Sheesh. Queen C1 and Rook B to C8. So he like, well, hopefully I hold. Hold the line, boys. Hold the line. Rook B to C8. Only thing he could do. Now, finish it out. White to move, folks. What do you got to do now? This one ain't over. This one ain't over. Full name, there ain't no air stuff right. Bitch, wait for to play A5. What's an AK-47 closer to that, right? That's called attack, says Kitty Tiger. Attack. Bishop A4. Bishop A4 is called gun because always two rooks supported by the queen at the bottom. Queen in the middle. Um, yeah, it's always a gun. I mean, you can always kind of set it up. Really, this is the ideal way to set it up. Two rooks in front, queen behind. Because sometimes if you got a lead, like, do you really want to lead with the queen? Or do you want the queen in the back? It's like, if, if all of this trades down, if your queen's in the middle, then you got to sack the queen eventually. If it's in the front, you got to sack the queen. So putting it in behind it is the best so that you can sack whatever's in front and the queen leads last. Queen at the back. So in fact, bishop a4 is the move. Bishop a4 is correct because now b5 is going to happen and we're crashing down here where the gun is just too much. So he played b5 because he ain't had nothing to do. This is a pretty obvious move, chat. Bishop takes b5. Easy. And then he played king e8. Right? <laughs> what is this move? Don't know. One of the engine moves that like just stopped the mate from being mate. Mate in four. How is it mate in four? Like what? Because he just throw in the random checks that don't mean nothing. King e8, correct. Bishop a4, same thing. King d8, and then, you know, well, first off, guys, he actually got here, and, and actually this did mean a little something because now he's defending c7. But this isn't over. This isn't over over yet. In fact, what do you do? Might to move, folks. This is gun because of the rooks on the barrel, and the queen is the ammunition. Very nice. So we got b5, b5. We got some b5s in the building. A3, a4, b5. Start shooting. B5 and black resigns. So here, in fact, B5 does win. B5 does win. Right, takes, 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 right. So you get this position, this is actually extremely equal. So this is what you don't want. And in fact, Aliakin knew this, and he wanted to keep the pressure. So what he did is he just clamped down on the game with H4. And basically saying, you have no moves. Like, you literally have no moves as black. So he clamped down a position, and right here, Aaron Nimzer was just resigned. This game was over. But he just played h4 and just said, make a move. I dare you. Go ahead, find find a few. And if you do have a few, I'm going to lock everything down, like h5, stop all the play over here. Bring the rook in to c5, maybe. And then slowly press, slowly press at the right moment. The silent h4, right. And in fact, this is the end of the game. h4 is it. That's it. No more game. Like, that's it. But the one thing you want to learn from here is where we get this Ali Ekin's gun, right? Look at this right here. Powerful gun down the file here. So this is pretty good. Alexander Ali Ekin, Aaron Nimzer was 1930. I hope y'all learned something from today. Um, and that is today's video.